वेलकम गर्ल्स ऑल द फर्स्ट ईयर गर्ल्स टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ टॉपिक कॉल्ड ग्रेविटेशन लिसन वेरी वेरी केयरफुली इट्स अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक अ वेरी 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 सिंपल टॉपिक वी गॉड कॉल्ड ग्रेविटेशन नाउ इन दैट द फर्स्ट टॉपिक वी गॉड नाउ दैट विल बी कॉल्ड द यूनिवर्सल लॉ of gravitation or newton's universal law of gravitation now let us see now what is the meaning we got for the universal law of gravitation now let us say now you consider two masses m1 and m2 and both of them they are separated by a distance d so consider two masses two masses m1 and m2 now separated by a distance d then you already know now there will be a gravitational force of interaction or you already know there will be a gravitational force of attraction now between the two particles so now i consider not two particles of masses m1 and m2 and both of them they are separated by a distance d then you already know now both the particles will be attracting each other by the gravitational force or both the particles will be attracting each other by the gravitational force so now uh, let us see now what is the statement we got for the universal law of gravitation so remember now according to the statement now remember the gravitational force now remember now remember the magnitude of the gravitational force between two masses will be directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them so remember now according to the statement the magnitude of the gravitational force will be directly proportional to the product of the masses of the two particles and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them so fairly a fairly simple so according to the statement the magnitude of the gravitational force will be directly proportional to the product of the the product of the masses of the two particles and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them so now uh, what i am doing i am assuming now let the gravitational force between the two particles will be f or let us say the gravitational force that will be acting on the two particles will be f then you already know now according to the statement now the magnitude of the gravitational force will be directly proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them so uh, so according to statement so according to the statement now i can write now the gravitational force will be directly proportional to the product of masses m1 m2 and the gravitational force 
Then the inverse the proportional to the square of the distance between them. Now what I will do? I will combine both of them. So combine equation one. Now combine equation one and equation two. So therefore, so I can say the gravitational force will be directly proportional to m1 m2 not divided by p square. So now uh, what I will do, now I will remove the proportionality and you already know now whenever we are removing the proportionality we need to introduce a suitable constant. Now let us see, now what is the constant we got or what is the suitable constant that should be introduced if I remove the proportionality. So therefore, now I can say the gravitational force capital F will be numerically equal to now G M1 M2 now divided by T square. So remember now here now capital G will be generally called the universal constant or capital G or will be generally called the universal or gravitational constant. So remember so remember the capital G the capital G is called a universal the capital G will be generally called universal gravitational constant. So our capital G will be generally called now universal or gravitational constant. So uh, therefore, now remember a uh, very important thing. So uh, remember, uh, now whenever I am removing the proportionality or whenever I am removing the proportionality, so now we are introducing a suitable constant now denoted by a letter capital G and capital G will be generally called the universal gravitational constant. So now let us see. So now let us see now what will be the value we got for the universal or constant. Or let us see now what is the value we got for capital G. Or uh, now let us see now what is uh, the value we got for capital G. So from uh, that particular formula or I can write now capital G uh, will be numerically equal to now I can write now F G square now divided by M1 into M2 or the universal gravitational constant or will be given or by the formula now capital G will be numerically equal to F D square now divided by M1 M2. So therefore now remember now what will be now remember, now what will be the value of capital G? Now the value of capital G will be given by now G will be numerically equal to now we got now 6.67 into 10 power minus 11 and the unit will be Newton meter square now divided by kg square so newton uh, meter square now divided by kg square so remember now this will be the standard value of the gravitational constant nobody will tell you you need to remember the value of
of capital G in order to solve the numerical problem. Now one has to remember the value of capital G that will be given by now 6.67 now multiplied by 10 power minus 11 newton meter square now divided by kg square. So that is now what we call the value of capital G. So once uh, you are familiar uh, with the gravitational law or once uh, you are familiar with the universal uh, gravity universal law of gravitation now let us move forward so once again now remember the gravitational force that will be acting now between the two masses will be given by the formula now capital F will be numerically equal to capital G M1 M2 not divided by D square so remember the standard formula for the gravitational force now capital F will be numerically equal to capital G M1 M2 not divided by D square where capital G will be generally called the universal gravitational constant and remember the value of capital G will be numerically equal to 6.67 into 10 power minus 11 newton meter square are divided by kg square. So that is what we call the universal uh, law of gravitation. Now once uh, you are familiar uh, with the universal uh, law of gravitation, now once uh, you are familiar uh, with the universal law, now let us see now one more uh, important thing, now that uh, will be generally called now relation between small g and capital G. So one more uh, important thing, now we got now relation between now small g and capital G. Now you already know now capital G will be called the universal gravitational constant and what do you call small g? Now remember now small g will be called the acceleration due to gravity or small g or will be generally called the acceleration due to gravity. So now uh, we are trying to obtain now what is the relation now between the acceleration due to gravity and the gravitational constant or now we are trying to obtain the relation now between a uh, capital G and small g. So let us see now what is the concept we got or let us see now how to obtain the relation uh, between capital G and small g. So uh, very simple. Now uh, what do you do? Now you consider our own planet Earth. So now uh, what do you do? So now uh, So uh, now uh, what do you do? Now you consider our own planet Earth. So now uh, you consider our own planet Earth. So remember now every planet 
will be assumed to be a solid sphere or every planet or will be assumed to a solid sphere that's the reason why now consider our own planet earth now let us say now the mass of the earth will be capital M and the radius of the earth will be capital R now always remember now the mass of the earth will always be concentrated at the center now the mass of the earth will always be concentrated at the center so what do you do now consider our own planet earth now let us say the mass of the earth will be capital m and the radius of the earth will be capital r so now uh, what i am doing so now i am taking a small particle of mass small m or now i am taking a small particle of mass m and i am placing on the surface of the earth so now uh, what will happen to the particle now the moment you are keeping the particle on the surface of the earth then what will happen to the particle now the particle will be attracted now towards the center of the earth or the particle will be gravitationally attracted now towards the center of the earth so you are already familiar now every particle will be strongly attracted now towards the center of the earth so there is a reason why now whenever i am placing a particle of mass small m on the surface of the earth then the particle will be strongly attracted not towards the center of the earth so now uh, let us see now what will be the gravitational force that will be experienced by the mass particle not due to the earth or let us find out now what will be the gravitational force that will be experienced by the mass particle not due to the earth so so now uh, what i can do so i can find out so what will be the gravitational force so what will be the gravitational force uh, acting on the particle so gravitational force acting on the particle so gravitational force acting on the particle towards the center of the earth so towards the center of earth so now i can say now the gravitational force that will be acting on the particle not towards the center of earth is given by the formula now just now you remember we have written the formula for the gravitational force and you remember now what is the general formula for the gravitational force so general formula for the gravitational force will be given by now capital f will be numerically equal to g m1 m2 now divided by g square so in this formula now what is m1 now m1 will be the mass of the earth 
Now M2 will be the mass of the particle and G will be the separation between them and will be equal to capital R. So become familiar now in this formula now M1 will be standing for the mass of the earth now M2 will be standing for the mass of the particle and the separation between them will be equal to R. So it is assured in this formula. So I can obtain now what will be the gravitational force that will be acting on the particle now towards the center of the earth. So therefore, now I can see now capital F will be numerically equal to now G capital M into small m now divided by R square. So let us call it now equation 1. So remember now this will be the gravitational pull or remember now this will be the gravitational force that will be acting on the mass particle now due to which it will be strongly attracted now towards the center of the earth so given uh, by the formula so capital F will be numerically equal to gmm now divided by R square then uh, if you take in uh, the diagram now I can remove the diagram now one more uh, important thing now one more uh, important thing now remember now what will be the weight of the particle now what will be the weight of the particle now you already know now the weight of the particle will always be equal to now mass into gravity or remember the weight of any particle or the weight of any body will always be defined as the product of mass and gravity. That's the reason why now the weight of the particle is given by now the blue will be numerically equal to mg. So now I remember the concept now how you are defined weight now remember now weight will be always defined or weight will always be defined the gravitational force that will be acting on it will be generally called the weight or remember now weight will always be defined the gravitational force with which now every body will be attracted towards the center of the earth will be generally called weight. So now become familiar now the definition of weight will be it will always be defined the gravitational force with which now every particle will be attracted towards the center of the earth will be generally called weight. So therefore, now what I can do, now I can equate 1 and 2, now why? Because now weight will be numerically equal to the gravitational force that will be acting on the particle now towards the center of the earth that's the reason why I can equate 1 and 2 so therefore now what I can write from 1 and 2 so from 1 and 2 so therefore now the blue will be numerically equal to F so therefore now mg will be numerically equal to now gmn 
now divided by r square now what will happen now small m and small m are will be getting cancelled so what will be remaining so small m and small m are will be getting cancelled so what are will be remaining now so therefore the gravity of will be given uh, by the formula now gm are divided by r square or remember now this will be the relation we got between small g and capital g or it can also be called the formula for the gravity on the surface of any planet so remember it can be called as the relation between small g and capital g and it can also be called the formula for the gravity on the surface of any planet will be given uh, by the formula of small g will be numerically equal to now gm or divided by r square so remember now this will be the formula we got for the gravity on the surface of any planet need not be earth it can be any planet if you know now what will be the mass of the planet if you know what is the radius of the planet then applying this formula now one can find now what will be the gravity on the surface of any planet that will be given by now small g will be numerically equal to now gm now divided by r square so that is the uh, Now that is uh, what we call the relation between now small g and capital G. Now uh, one more uh, important thing. Now one more uh, important thing. Now listen uh, carefully. So now I want to express. So now I want to express g. So now I want to express G in terms of G in terms of the mean density of the planet. So now uh, I want to express now what will be the gravity in terms of the mean density of the planet. So now R S E. So now R S E. Now one more uh, important thing. So one more uh, important thing. So now I want to express gravity now in terms of the density of the given planet. Or now I want to express. the gravity or uh, in terms of the mean the uh, density of the planet so let us see now how we can do it now how to obtain the relation or how to obtain a uh, gravity in terms of the density of a given planet so fairly a uh, simple now you already know the master formula now you already know the gravity on the surface of any planet will be given by the formula now gm divided by r square now let us call it equation 1 so you already know the gravity on the surface of any planet will be given by the general formula now small g will be numerically equal to now gm are divided by r square so now uh, what i will do 
So now, uh, what I will do? Uh, but now you already know. Now the mass of the planet can always be written as a product of now volume into density. So remember this important concept, or remember this important concept: the mass of any planet or the mass can always be written as the product of the volume and the density of the planet or the mass of the planet can be written as a product of volume and density so therefore the mass of the given planet will be numerically equal to the volume multiplied by the density of the planet and the density of the planet will be denoted by a letter rho so now uh, you are already familiar now what will be the volume of a solid sphere now you are already aware now what will be the volume of a solid sphere now why because now earth will be acting like a solid sphere and you already know now what will be the volume of a solid sphere that will be given by the formula 4 by 3 pi r cube so remember so therefore the mass of the planet will be numerically equal to the volume of our own planet or the volume of every spherical planet will be given by the formula now 4 by 3 pi r cube now multiplied by density now let us call it now this will be now this will be equation 2 now we got the mass of the planet now what I will do I will substitute equation 2 or I will substitute equation 2 in equation 1 or wherever we got the mass of the planet or wherever we got the mass of the planet now that can be replaced by now 4 by 3 pi r cube into rho so therefore now what I will do now substitute now equation 2 in 1 so therefore now what we get now small g so small g uh, will be numerically equal to now what we get now g by r square now multiplied by the mass of the planet uh, will be given by now 4 by 3 pi r cube now multiplied by rho now what will happen now r square and r cube uh, will be getting cancelled now what will be remaining so if you look at the mathematical formula or if you look at the mathematical equation now what will be remaining we can clearly see now the gravity uh, will be given uh, by the formula so in the numerator 1r will be remaining so I can write now 4 pi capital G 4 pi capital G of R into rho now divided by 3 so 1 R and 1 R I will be getting cancelled now what will be remaining now 4 pi capital G R into rho now divided by 3 or this uh, can also be written so gravity will be numerically equal to 4 pi g divided by 3 now multiplied by r rho now you already know so 4 pi g divided by 3 is always a constant 
now why because now capital G is a universal constant and 4 pi by 3 is also a constant so the whole constant can be replaced by a single constant so what I am doing I am writing the entire constant as a single constant so what I will do now let 4 pi g now divided by 3 will be numerically equal to now another constant k so therefore now the gravity can be written by the formula now k r into rho so remember now that will be of the formula we got or that will be the expression we got for the gravity or in terms of the mean density of the planet or remember not the gravity in terms of the density of the planet will be given by the formula so g will be numerically equal to k r rho